All right, talking about polar coordinates here in section 9.6. And uh, to contrast and compare with another kind of uh, coordinate system, we'll look at rectangular coordinates. If I give you a point like 3 comma 4 in rectangular coordinates, that gives you two pieces of information, a horizontal piece of information and a vertical piece of information. So I go in the positive horizontal direction at 3 and then positive vertical 4 right there. And there's the point 3, 4. Polar coordinates are different. Um, we don't have an origin, we have a pole. Okay, so the center of the graph here is a pole. and uh, rather than uh, left and right, up and down, we have an angle and then a distance from the pole. Okay, so here we could have similar marks on these axes, but let me show you how they're different when we plot a point in polar coordinates. So we do something like um, 4, comma, pi, let's say, um, 5 pi over 6. Okay. Um, well, it, it's kind of weird, but we, we go in reverse order, um, at least in practice. So we go to 5 pi over 6, we find that angle. So that angle is like right here. Right. So then once we're at 5 pi over 6, we go a distance that's 4 away from the pole on that terminal side. Okay, to get that distance away from the pole, we kind of would draw a bit of a circle here between these two points. Obviously, this is four away, and this is four away from the pole, and four away from the pole right here on this terminal side would be about there. Okay, so that is a, a point in polar coordinates. It gives you an angle and a distance from the radius. Um, and the thing about polar coordinates, let's just get into it, we could represent this in uh, several different ways. Um, suppose, instead of going to 5 pi over 6, I went all the way around, like 180 away from that, and I went to 11 pi over 6. It's like right there. Uh, and so I come around to 11 pi over 6, I can still... Uh, have my point wind up here if instead of 4 I do negative 4 and 11 pi over 6. You see if I go if I kind of turn around 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 and face this direction uh, at 11 pi over 6 and then I say go negative 4 uh, in that direction away from the pole well you'd walk like backwards and you'd wind up being right there as well. Um, could also represent this with a, a positive 4 and just going all the way around the circle, right? finding a coterminal angle. So we could just add 2 pi to this and let's see, another color like green, we'll put a little x right there. We could still do a distance of positive 4 and um, from 5 pi over 6 we just add 12 pi over 6, so we're at 17 pi over 6. Right, for this one, we could just go all the way around like that uh, to 5 pi over 6 and all the way around one more rotation and still go a distance 4 away from the pole and have uh, that point represented in another way. So you can see there would be an infinite number of ways to, to, ways to represent a single point uh, between going around and around, around the circle and having negative radius, uh, lots and lots of different ways. So um, that gives you some basics there. Um, now, we're going to convert a polar coordinate to a rectangular coordinate. You can see clearly that once I put a point down on, on the polar coordinates, there's some horizontal and some vertical aspect to it. Uh, and those are fairly simple to find. And I'll show you that right now. Whoa. There, if I do this, I get some nice straight lines. All right, so let's plot the point 3 comma pi over 3. All right, 
so that is going to put us right about there. There's pi over 3. And to get 3 away from the pole, we just have to set a scale. So that's 3. We'd like the scale over here to be the same or close to it. So to find a distance that's 3 away, we draw an arc. Right? That's a, a part of a circle, circular curve. And we'll put a point right there. So that's 3 comma pi over 3. That's the point that is 3 away from the pole at an angle of pi over 3 from the positive x-axis. So now we're going to find the, the horizontal and vertical components to this point and then say, give it an xy. What we have here currently is in r comma theta. We're going to translate that to an x comma y. Right? Um, and it's fairly simple. Uh, we'll kind of derive it here, and then it will always be true forever. Um, which is the great thing about math. So there's this point, and it, there's this horizontal part to it, about right there, and then this vertical part to it, about that much. And if we notice, this is a right triangle. This is our x, and this would be our y. Uh, this is our theta right here, and this is r and r in this case equals 3. Um, but if we just generalize it, theta, r, x, and y, um, we could say that, let's look at this angle. Let's, let's look at the, the side opposite, which is y, and the hypotenuse, which we're calling r. We could say that the sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, and then, you know, we would like an expression for y, so y, if we multiply both sides by r, y is r sine theta. And this shouldn't look too new. We've solved for sides of triangles before, and they've been uh, very much like that. We could do the same thing with cosine. Cosine of that angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, x over r. Mm, so multiply both sides by r, solve for x, we get r cosine theta. So any x, y is going to be r times the cosine of theta for x, and r times the sine of theta for y. So for this point, uh, we'll get into specifically this example. Um, for this one, y is equal to 3 times the sine of theta. We should be pretty good with our unit circles, uh, by memory even, by now. So the sine of pi over 3 is going to be root 3 over 2. We multiply this by root 3 over 2. That's the y value. 3 root 3, 3, oh, 3 root 3 over 2. Okay, this would be r, which is 3, times the cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half. That's 3 halves. Right, so we got 3 halves, comma, 3 root 3 over 2. That would be uh, 3 halves this way, which drawing is pretty close to being 3 halves, and 3 root 3 over 2 this way, which would be really close to 3. So, uh, good. There's an example of translating from uh, polar to uh, rectangular coordinates. Um, now, if we if we take a look at this, this is always true, right? The the x value is always equal to r, r times the cosine of theta, and uh, similarly for y. So using that, it's r cosine theta. We'll use those two facts to translate uh, um, regular functions that we're used to, you know, rectangular coordinate functions, y equals something with x, uh, turn it into a polar um, equation. So let's take the example x squared plus y squared equals 64. All right. uh, from our experience with, with uh, conic sections, we should recognize this as the equation of a circle with its center at the origin and a radius of 8. Um, if we just use these um, the substitutions, uh, we can simplify it, solve for r, and find uh, a polar equation rather than a rectangular equation like this is. Uh, so let's go about doing that. x is going to be r cosine theta. We're going to square that plus 
y is our sine theta. We're going to square that. That's equal to 64. We just made that substitution. Now we'll solve for r, if at all possible. So r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta equals 64. Uh, so now we can factor out an r squared. I don't know why my r's are coming out so funny. r squared times cosine squared plus sine squared equals 64. Hopefully you recognize this as a Pythagorean identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So r squared times 1 is r squared equals 64. So r equals 8. So this would be the polar equation. It's very simple, much more simple than this. Um, to give you an idea of what that looks like, let me just graph it over here. Well, this is uh, in polar coordinates. Uh, seemingly, it doesn't matter what theta is. Whatever theta is doesn't affect this. R is always 8. So if we marked this as a radius of 8, 8, 8, and 8 ish. Uh, so negative 8, negative 8. But those, those magnitudes are 8. And we see that no matter where we are, no, where, no matter where theta is, or what theta is, we're just going to draw a graph where the radius, so the distance from the pole, is always 8. So in polar form, that's the equation for a circle. Much easier. R is just 8. Um, so just a quick snapshot of uh, what we covered in 9.6. Uh, and I will put together some sample problems, and thanks for watching.